Hello, friends. It's great to see you. Will Davis Jr. here with good news today. I pray you're doing well. Thanks for being part of this. Always feel free to send comments, questions, complaints to seniorpastor at acfellowship.org. Maybe not complaints. Okay, uh, we're talking about these amazing movement on day four. And God will begin beginning to fill what he had formed. We're still talking about his creation of the sun and moon and the stars. And God said, let there be lights, verses verse 14 of Genesis 1. God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in, in the expanse of the heavens to give light to the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. So much fun. All right, so um, when in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, that is the beginning, we believe, of time, space, matter, and life. Everything in which we live as humans. Time may have begun moving in, the, in that instantaneous moment when God created everything, but time wasn't marked until the fourth day. We don't really know. Uh, but the marking of time, the, the measuring of time, did not happen until day four. The earth may have been spinning on its axis before this, probably was. Um, but the ability or the need to record time obviously doesn't happen until humans are there to mark it. So notice that before God's put humans on the planet, now he's got this, this scene, this system of marking time because they're going to be able to need to mark time. He's going to give a law to his people with all kinds of festivals and requirements and celebrations and annual and monthly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the marking of time is going to be very, very important to his people. And so now on day four, we have the ability through the heavens, isn't that interesting, to mark the passage of time with the day and the night, the 24 hours, with the moon and the 31 days, with circling the earth, excuse me, circling the sun and a year, and seasons. The seasons will come and go as the earth rotates on its axis at 23 degrees, and the seasons will show us the passage of time and the new seasons coming in on the earth as well every year, the four seasons that we have, or two and a half if you live in Austin. It's absolutely amazing phenomena that God created. So we as humans can mark time. The stars, which are given very little discussion in this passage, it's kind of funny. I'm going to talk about them tomorrow. Um, and also the stars. It's just a funny kind of afterthought. Um, were also the means by which uh, we got guidance in the early days. Sailors and travelers would look to the scars and, and stars and navigate and know where they were with North Star, North Star giving us true north. They could watch the stars at night and determine where they were, what month it was, and um, where, they were, where they were going based on the alignment of the heavens. It was absolutely fascinating. So isn't it cool that God built into the, the daily, monthly, annual rhythm of our universe a means by which we can know how much time has passed and where we're going. Now, it's an important insertion here, because Moses talks about it, that the stars and the planets not become objects of worship, which they did in many lands, including the land of Egypt that the Egyptians had just released the Israelites from. All kinds of worship went on of the stars and the planets and the moon, etc. And the scriptures strictly forbid that. They are messengers. They are representatives. They are um, storytellers. Remember, in Genesis 1-3, God said, let there be light, which means revelation. Everything thereafter is going to tell a story. The stars, the heavens, the skies, the sun and moon, they tell us a story. They should help us measure the passage of time, and they help us find our way, not in an astrological standpoint, but in a directional, um, geo-directional standpoint. But the point is, for devotional purposes today, that if we'll look up, if we'll look up and wait on the Lord, he has built into the creation all that we need, and now with his word and the Holy Spirit, to find our way. 
the Lord is good. He's given us a magnificent world to live in. Yay, God. More tomorrow. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for my great listeners. Thank you for the stars that show us the passage of seasons and times and days and years and the marking of time for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.